Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today we are going to do a special online paper crafting class. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and we are going to have this live um, hop. It's a global hop with demonstrators from five different countries, 17 of us total, and we are hopping this week with our Facebook Lives. So I'm participating in that along with the 16 other demonstrators. If you look at the description um, that I posted just now with this video, with this broadcast, you'll be able to see all the other demonstrators that are involved in this. Hi, Jean. So right now we're live. We're live at noon on, what day is it? May 8th. So <laughs> May 8th, 2019. And we're doing noon because it's this special uh, hop, this special Facebook hop. So um, that's why I had to change the time on all of you. I'm so glad that some of you could come back. Yay, there's Julie again and Mary Jo and Julie Williamson. Awesome. I am experiencing a runny nose today and you know why? <laughs> this is so gross. TMI, uh, it's below 70 degrees. I, I have issues at the 60 degree level. <laughs> so if I have to you know, go like this once in a while during my video, please excuse me. I also want you to excuse my fingernails. Those of you that have been watching have um, already known that I, I usually have painted nails. They look, you know, way better than they will today. But <laughs> I am going through a, um, a downtime with my nails. I'm trying to heal them from lots of, you know, polish applications. And they're looking very ratty today. <laughs> so please forgive me. Anyways, hi, Carol. Hi, Janet. Awesome. Sherry's with us again. And Deborah. we're going to have so much fun today. This card, I, well, first of all, I put a lot of time into it because I wanted to make sure I was showing you this awesome stamp set that is leaving us real soon. I wanted to really show you how wonderful this stamp set is. If you go on Pinterest, if you do Google searches for this stamp set, it's called Pocket Full of Sunshine, you will find trillions of ideas with it. It is a must-have stamp set. And because I wanted to do something a little different than what I saw online, I decided to go masculine with it. So I'm sporting my, my jean jacket and actually has the Stampin' Up! logo on it. I got it years ago. I don't even know which event it was, but um, I'm sporting my jean jacket because we're going to make a masculine jean pocket card. And it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Don, GJ, how are you? <laughs> awesome. It's so good to see all of you chiming in and saying hello to me. And yes, please comment because with this Facebook live hop that we're doing, all of the demonstrators participating are drawing for prizes because it makes it fun. And of course, we're going to be featuring retiring stamp sets the whole time. So make sure that you follow the hop and go from um, video to video if you didn't see them live. Um, otherwise, there's a few more future ones that you can catch live if you didn't catch them already. And check out all the wonderful projects that people are creating. Let me make sure that I've told you everything. Um, da, 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 da. Yep, I already mentioned that. Awesome. Okay, so um, I will post this on my blog tomorrow. Normally, I, I wait until Saturday, but I want to get this up right away because I don't want anybody to miss out on this stamp set. So on that note, let's set up the camera. Oops, sorry, my finger's in the way there. We're gonna set up the camera and I'm gonna show you the supplies that you'll need if you wanna recreate this card. Okay, so you can see here, oops, let's get rid of that A there. <laughs> it's a masculine jean pocket card. Um, I'm surrounded by men in my life, mostly guys in my personal um, home life because I have two boys, they are 12 and 13, and then of course my husband and my cat's a male. Um, but my boys have tons of friends, and right now they're lots of guy friends. So I'm always in need of boy cards for birthday parties or whatever. So anyways, that's what I'm going to be making today is the masculine jean pocket card. We're going to need native navy card stock, basic black for a background layer. Cajun craze is going to be a complementary color in it, which kind of goes with copper. And so, hi Cindy from Canada. Awesome. I love it when you guys tell me where you're from. Keep doing that. Um... Uh, the copper is going to also carry over into the masculine look too of the jeans because if you'll if you ever notice guys jeans they're not pretty they don't have well typically they don't have rhinestones on them <laughs> they have more like metal right so um, on this side you can see the other items that we're going to be using we're going to be using Cajun craze ink whisper white ink you'll notice there's no knight of navy ink in here interesting right um, sponges or daubers, and I'm going to actually use both 
you'll see why. Grid paper is necessary. You want to have something on the bottom underneath your surface for this because it gets a little messy. Uh, metallic brads, we're going to be using the copper ones, and then some tools. Now, I did point out here also, uh, the retiring items are in red, so make sure that if you want those items, you'll get them before they're gone. The trimmer, by the way, if you haven't gotten it yet, I don't recommend getting it from Stampin' Up! at this point because people are nabbing up those refill blades, right? <laughs> and they're going like hotcakes, so um, I recommend waiting until we see what trimmer Stampin' Up! is going to come out with next. But just know that you're gonna need a paper trimmer for this. The classic label punch. Hi, Viola. Awesome, from Iowa. Wonderful. <laughs> awesome. You and I have the same. She has two sons and a male cat too. Oh, I want. I love it. Um, Multi-purpose liquid glue or fine tip glue. That's important for one step in the card. But I'm also gonna be using it in place of uh, sticky, like uh, what's it called, tear and tape adhesive. So. Um, you'll need a liquid glue and what else should I point out here oh the stamp and pierce mat is so important and then of course we need some things that are not stampin up products uh, sandpaper and I recommend a very very fine grit sandpaper hopefully you can steal that from somewhere in your house um, and then like tissue like the kind I need for my nose uh, and or dryer sheets dryer sheets are really good for wiping off glitter and tiny fine specks of dust. Um, these additional supplies are just for what I'm gonna show you afterwards, but you don't need them for this card. You'll notice in my supplies that I do not have anything um, listed there that involves like a Stamparatus or a Big Shot because I want everyone who might be new to stamping in this video, in this broadcast, to know that you can make awesome cards without having all of those tools. You're going to see those tools used in some other videos, but we wanted to show you a variety. So even though this card is using some basic tools, it does involve some extra steps, but I think you're going to have fun with it. So let's set up the table here. I'm going to move my picture over in the bottom right hand corner, which is where I feel comfortable. And we're going to get started by cutting. So we're going to take our um, trimmer and we're going to start with our Knight of Navy cardstock. And notice dark colors just show off such a glare. I'm so sorry about that. Um, we'll, try to, we'll try to cut quickly here. So what you wanna do is cut your cardstock a little bit less than in half. Now in half for 11 inches is five and a half inches. And we wanna go just slightly less than that because our, we're making the insert part of our card. It's gonna be the main part that folds open but it's not gonna be the full um, size of the card, and you'll see why. So we're gonna trim it five and a quarter inches. We're gonna discard this for, for now. We're gonna need a little bit of it later. And then we're gonna rotate this. Now normally, half of eight and a half inches is four and a quarter, but we wanna go um, a little bit less than that. We wanna go to four inches here. So before we do that, let's do a cut at eight inches. So we're gonna shove this over to eight inches. And you can see here on my trimmer, this extendable arm. I loved our trimmer. <laughs> I'm so sad it's leaving. Um, our extendable arm is at the eight inch mark. And there we go. We don't need that piece. And now we can fold this in half, but let's do a score line at four inches. And we will fold that in half. It is ready for us to go, okay? So let's keep that one. We're gonna cut a slightly smaller Knight of Navy piece, and this one's gonna be cut at three and a half inches by four and three quarters. So we'll start at three and a half this way. Put that off to the side. Rotate this one to four and a quarter inches. I'm sorry, four and three quarter inches. Okay. All right, awesome. Yes, lint rollers are good for glitter and stuff too. Um, I didn't use a lint roller this time because it's a little bit stickier than what I want. Um, but yes, lint rollers are awesome, Deborah. Thank you for that tip. Um, you could even use post-it notes, I guess. Um, speaking of like something stickier, you could use post-it notes, but I find that the tissue and or the dryer sheets are gonna work just fine with what I'm gonna show you. Okay, so now we have a smaller layer and that's gonna go right here on the front of the card, okay? Hi, Irene. <laughs> awesome, I love it when you say hello to me, you guys. Um, five and a half inches now we're gonna cut this at because we have half of 11 this is our basic black color and we're gonna rotate that and cut that at four and a quarter inches so now you're gonna see how this little sandwich um, sandwich pieces of cards here are gonna 
kind of overlap each other. So that's the base of the card, and that's why this piece had to be slightly smaller. I wanted the black frame to stay around our card when we opened it up, which is why that's, that's why I chose to do the card layers this way. Okay, the last piece that we're gonna cut with the trimmer for now is our copper. And we have lots of metallic um, sheets, these metallic copper, or metallic sheets, uh, foil sheets they're called. We have it in copper, we have it in a champagne color, um, silver and gold, and I think we have it in a black, um, which is more of a shiny one, it's not really metallic. So we're gonna cut this slightly over the size that we cut this piece, because we just want a little hint of it. So I'm gonna cut it at three and five eighths inches. We'll set that aside by four and seven eighths, which is just under the five inch mark. Okay, now you can see it starting to layer up real nice. All right, that's kind of the look we're gonna go for. Let's set the trimmer off to the side and bring in our fun sandpaper now. So we're gonna open up our card base and I think I'm gonna zoom in just a tad here. So, hi Teresa from South Carolina, awesome. I love that you're live with me, thank you. Okay, so I've got some sandpaper here and my grit, what would that be? Is that, um, oh here, 150? <laughs> I don't know, I don't work with sandpaper much anymore. I used to, I loved working with my, I had a sanding machine, um, sand, like a little handheld sander that, that I think my husband took from me. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing is I'm shaking the camera on you. I'm actually giving this a really quick rough surface. I want the jean pants looking part of the card to not be like new jeans from, I don't know, the 80s. The, the, <laughs> I want it to be really roughed up because nowadays people wear kind of worn jeans, right? They even buy them worn with holes in it. So here we go. <laughs> And we're doing both sides. So you see that? That's what we're gonna clean up with the tissue and or the, um, oops, where'd my other piece go? And or the dryer sheet. I'm not a big fan of dryer sheets, just to let you know, because I know that they do harm to the environment, but I use them with crafting. <laughs> Otherwise I use those wool balls, you know, that you get from Norwex. Okay, so we have a roughed up surface. And you can see the difference. Can you see that? You can see the difference between a non-roughed up side of the, um, of the Knight of Navy cardstock and the roughed up side. So it's, it's quite the difference. So this can be set aside now. Um, we're gonna use it one more time, so don't get rid of it. And then we're gonna bring in our tissue. And we'll start with that, and we'll just kind of wipe off our surfaces here. Because we don't want all of that to get onto our ink. So, and whatever you can't pick up with your tissue, then, throw that away here, then you just grab your dryer sheet. And you can see I've already got some um, blue dust on there from the cardstock sample that I made before. This just really picks up the last of it. It um, helps clean it up. Because people who've watched me know that I am not a fan of messy stamping. <laughs> so, I try, you guys, I really try. All right, so here we have our pieces ready to decorate up. So we're gonna take our stamps. Now I gotta bring my cheat one over here. Oh wait, one more thing. We have to prepare our jean uh, material with Whisper White card stuff, or Whisper White ink. So you can see, I've already kind of ruined the surface of my pad by dipping the sponge to get the ink out of there into my white pad. So I'm gonna show you a trick for this. All right, let's take our dauber and you can really daub anywhere on your ink pad. You can even daub where the blue stuff is. But you're gonna daub there and then you're gonna, you're gonna put it off to the side. And you're just gonna kind of build up a little section here on your grid paper of white ink. Okay? And now you don't need your dauber anymore. And you can close this up. And then you grab a sponge. Now when I get my sponges, I take and I cut them into either six or eight pieces. So here you can see my, my sponge started out as a full circle. I've already used one. It just makes the sponges go further. Okay, so now I can kind of tap up and down into 
my little pile here, and you can see there's white ink on this, the bottom of my sponge. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of start with where the jeans are worn out. And typically they're worn out right on the butt, right? So we're gonna start there, and you might have to kind of blot some of it off. And we're gonna real roughly with lots of muscle, sponge on some white ink. You guys are gonna love this hop. I hope that you're visiting Hop to Hop. Let me know if you've seen any other ones. I would love to hear um, which ones you've visited already. You can get in on prize drawings from any of the hops um, that are in your country. So if you are from the US, like I am, um, comment on my video or any comments, you know, comments on the, on the videos from other demonstrators who are in the US. Now comment on all of them, because we'd love to hear from you, but um, definitely know that those comments for the US demonstrators are gonna get you that entry into the prize. And likewise, so if you're from Canada, you could definitely um, make sure that you wanna comment on all the Canadian videos and Netherlands, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So you can see I'm kinda just eyeballing wherever, wherever we're gonna go with this. And it's okay if you have little splotches there because jeans are not perfect. Okay, that looks pretty good. You know what, funny, it's funny because it looks a lot um, more splotchy in the video. Hopefully it's smoother when it comes back on a replay. I don't know. Anyways, maybe you guys aren't seeing it, but my camera is showing it kind of splotchy and it's very smooth on my end here. So we're just adding a little bit more white to that piece too, just to kind of show that it's jean material. Just go in there. Okay, now what I recommend if you're a clean freak like me <clears throat> is take this corner and fold it over and forget about it and <laughs> now it won't be in your way all right let's take our stamps now and I forgot that we have to do one other piece I messed up so let's do this really quick here we're gonna do this on fast play okay watch this it's gonna go super quick Da, 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 da. There, and it's okay if this piece bends. This is a scrap. You're just gonna need a scrap. I gotta mention that in our, in our measurements. Okay, I'm gonna put my reading glasses there. So if you add too much ink, your, your paper's gonna look like this, and you don't wanna do that, okay? Um, yeah, the teddy bear one was awesome, wasn't it, Michael? I love that one too. Okay, now let's bring in our stamps. And for this stamp set, it's recommended that you have at least the D, the E, and I think the C and the A, but you might as well get them all, A, B, C, D, E, right? <laughs> so I've got my stamps and they're already mounted onto my blocks, ready to go. And we're gonna bring in the Cajun Craze ink, which you might think, what? You're using a lighter color on a darker paper? Well, we, first of all, we've lightened up the paper a little bit. So this will help you to um, you know, show off this color a little bit more. But when you look at jeans, they actually have like a copper or a yellowish or sometimes a white, but usually it's more like a yellow or a, a coppery colored um, thread. And so, yeah, um, I'm seeing a question in here. Where do you find the li list or the links for the other hops? So in the description of this video, I think that was Deborah. Yeah, Deborah asked it. In the description of this video, which I actually think I connected to it before I went live, so it should be in there right now you can see the links for all of those hops that have already happened, and then I'll update it for um, not just going to their page, but going to their direct video after they've posted their video. But yeah, and you can also find it in the event description. Thanks for asking that question, Deborah. That was awesome. Okay, so now let's go ahead and stamp our pocket. We've got our ink pad open. For those of you that are beginners, our ink pads are very unique. They um, are stored so that the ink actually stays at the surface or the top of the pad upside down and that keeps, keeps it nice and fresh. To open them, it's just like a compact. You lift right here. You can also do the trick of um, pushing right there. So, and then you rotate it and slide it in. Let's go ahead and ink up the ink, the little pocket here. You just pounce it up and down. Sorry, I'm out of view here. You just pounce it up and down. And then you come in and you do your pockets. <laughs> and I'm gonna to try to get them close to how I did them on the original card because this card is gonna be part of the prize that I give away. And did you 
Did you guys just see what I did? Oh my gosh. Okay, I tell you to get the stamp and pierce mat. I have a hard table surface now. I've changed to a harder table surface. And I forgot. Here it is, right here. See, it's it's sitting to the left of me, waiting for me to use it. With the stamp set on top that I forgot to share with you. <laughs> I'm just so excited to show the card, you guys. I'm sorry. This is pocket full of sunshine. Now you can see the images. We're stamping this image first. It's the pocket. We're going to be using these stitched images too and um, the for you. But you can see that this stamp set tends to make some really cutesy cards. So that's why we're going to try to make it as non cutesy and as teenage ish as possible. But we're going to hope that that's stamped. And it did. Yay. There. Now we have our now we have our foam mat underneath. Now we'll go ahead and ink up our other our pocket for the left side. Yes, if we do it this way, you can see the full back side of these jeans. <laughs> A lot of the cards out there on Pinterest, uh, Google searches, they just have like the front, right, of the card with one pocket. I thought it'd be fun to put the pocket on the inside of the card. All right, now we're going to, oops, might as well leave this out here because now we need to put some stitch marks going across the top. And these are just going to be even. So we'll stamp one there. Using the same ink here now. We're just using the Cajun Craze all the way across. Um, and since I'm right-handed, I just had to rotate it so I could see that I'm connecting with the stamp that I just stamped. So that goes straight across. And then we're going to do another one because if you look at the back of jeans, there's actually another um, stitch that's right above the pockets, typically. And I know this because I googled jean pockets. <laughs> but yeah, you could also just, you know, go people watching, go to a mall and stare at people's butts to find out <laughs> where those lines on the jeans go. And I'm sorry, this pocket's a little bit higher than it should be. Sorry about that, whoever's getting this card. Please forgive me. On this piece here, we're going to stamp going. Make sure I'm looking at my cheat card here. We're going to go across about an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch down from the top. And then we're going to start from that and we're going to go straight down about three quarters or a half of an inch away from the right edge. Okay, so what we've done is kind of made like a, a zoomed up um, image of the pocket areas of the pants. Okay, so there's that. And the last pieces are going to be stamped on, actually we have a few more, <laughs> we're going to stamp on this piece, we're going to stamp it right along the edge. And then we're going to take a punch called the classic label punch and we're going to bring it in so that we see the stitch mark and I'll show you here, so that we see that stitch mark right inside the punch. Do you see that? We're going to punch that down. And we're going to do that again. So ink it, stamp it, bring it in and punch it. And the reason why we're just doing one side is because we have to, we have, we can't really guess before it's punched um, where the other one's going to go, unless you want to get out your ruler and measure. But on these second punches on the other sides of these uh, classic label punched pieces, we're just going to come right in so that the line of that middle part of the stamp. Can you see there's a line down the middle? So that's going right up to the edge of the cardstock on the opposite side. And I will show you here really quickly what that looks like close up. Oops, where's the camera? There it is. So you can see there's a stitch mark on each side. Okay, and then we'll ink this one up, do the same thing. Okay, so we have those pieces done. With our Cajun Craze piece, we're going to stamp a little upward and a little bit across, connecting so that we have a straight line with a straight line connecting. And we're gonna stamp some words under there and we're gonna punch it out with the classic label punch. So that's why you need to make kind of a T shape that's laying down. And then we're gonna do another one. And that one is gonna go across, more across the top. We'll do it across the top here. 
So we'll stamp and we'll stamp again, kind of like a T-shape again. And that's gonna be for a larger um, sentiment. So we're done with that piece, that stamp. Now let's bring in our fun V and we'll stamp that uh, through the middle of this pocket. So most of this card is really stamping. I mean, once you have the card stock kind of prepped with the sanding and, and, and the inking, it's really just a matter of where are you putting the stamps. We'll stamp our larger sentiment, a little pocket. We'll stamp that right up to the top here, leaving about a half of an inch to the side there. And then we're gonna stamp the word money underneath that because money reaches out just a little bit further and needed a little bit of room over here. Okay, so there's that one. And the last one that we'll stamp is, oh, I got ink on my finger, you guys. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> um, is the for you. And we'll stamp that underneath and really close to the stitch marks down here. Okay, and you can, you can position that up higher. It's just that I wanted to not use up too much of my cardstock. I don't know why. You can position that T shape higher up into the scrap. So this is what we're gonna do with the For You. We're gonna punch it so that the top line of this image is in line with where the punch is cutting. And we're not going all the way out because we're just gonna make a little tag in fact, let's just grab our scissors now and cut that straight. And then we're gonna cut this one right at that line. So what you've got here, as you can see, is you've got the for you with stitch marks on top and on the bottom. And those are gonna line up with one of our pockets. We'll do the same with this piece and you can actually just hand cut it along those stitch marks this way or you can take your trimmer and line it up so that you can cut with the trimmer. But now we can bring in the cutter, because the trimmer, because we're gonna do it one more time. I told you we were gonna bring this in one more time. So now we can slice our sentiment into kind of a little rectangle piece here. Okay, so this will go on the front of the card. And again, just like the tiny one, it has the stitch marks at the top and at the bottom, thank you for sharing the video, Sandy and Lori, I appreciate that. <laughs> Joanne gets ink on her fingers every time. You know, I usually don't. I'm kind of a neat freak. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe there's just a lot of stamping on this card. Okay, so we have those done. And get these stamps out of the way. Bring in our brads, because our brads are next. So you can grab either the copper, there's like four different colors of brads in this. One is called a rose gold. It's a little bit um, darker, or no, it's a little bit lighter probably. And then there's the um, copper one. So you could do the rose gold or the copper. We'll grab the copper, I guess. And then you wanna grab the darker of the two for the small size as well, if I have one. If not, we'll just go ahead. Oh, I got one. Because the rose gold will work too, because it looks very coppery. All right, clean up the mess here, Rachel. We're gonna bring out the sandpaper again and we're gonna lay it flat. So here's our sandpaper. And we're gonna take our we're gonna take our brad and let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. We're just gonna take our brad and we're gonna rub it. And what we're doing is we're roughing up the surface of that brad because we don't want it to look girly. <laughs> okay? We want it to look masculine and roughed up and used. Okay. We'll do the same with the smaller one. Oh yeah, that looks good. Now we can add those to our pieces. And I am, um, I actually did this one wrong. That's okay. Um, we won't include the one on the inside. That's okay. So if I'll show you the finished card where this one's added, but I'm not gonna do that part over for you right now. So now we're gonna add a brad that's what happens with lives, you guys. You make mistakes, you can't go back. So we're gonna add the brad and we're gonna poke about a quarter of an inch down and a quarter of an inch in. 
to this piece, and that just creates a hole. You'll notice that I changed out my Stampin' Pierce mats. I'm using the one that has holes, because this is my Pierce mat, and the other one is fresh and clean for just stamping. And again, you don't need it um, for all your stamps, but for your photopolymer stamps, which have a um, which have no foam underneath the image like a, a regular stamp does, you need to have foam under your, your surface because it gives it a nice crisp look. Um, we're gonna actually add this to the piece first because I want the bread to go all the way through. So take out your snail adhesive next. And add this right in the little the little pocket or the little corner here of where those stitch marks connect. So now you can see that it looks like it's been stitched in to both sections. Ha ha! <laughs> I love that. Okay, so now we'll poke the hole and we'll stick the brad in. Uh, our clear blocks are great tools for smushing brads. You guys know what smushing is, right? So get a hard surface and just press it down. And now your brad is on there nice and flat and it has a nice roughed up um, little look there. These pieces are going to be buckle loops, like little belt loops. Um, and this one I would have put a hole into and added that brad, but we're not going to do it now. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so that goes right here. Oh, one more thing that we need to do. Hang on. Don't put that on yet. Bring in your trimmer. We need to make a slit. We're going to make a little slit along the top edge of this pocket. And that is another reason why it was important to have a backing, oopsie, sorry, brought in the black, a backing on the card is because you need, if you're gonna have a pocket, you need to have something so that, something there so that the um, item that you're putting in the pocket doesn't fall all the way through. So you start at the one end and you slice to the other end. And because I'm not hovering right above it, I'm just gonna finish that little snip there. Okay, if I was right on top of it, you'd see the top of my head though, and that would, would not be fun to show you guys. Okay, there. Now we can stick this tag on, like that, and now you have a pocket, and you can put in there, gosh, money, gift cards, a note, right? So this is actually almost ready to stick onto our card. We're gonna put our belt loops on next, and the middle belt loop has to have a little score line going through it. <laughs> so we're bringing in the trimmer again. Oh my gosh, Rachel, I guess we needed this more than I thought. Um, so here we go. We're gonna just line up the corner and the corner with the, the channel of our, of our um, trimmer. And if you have like a, a scoring, you know, simply scored tool or something, you could use that too, but you're just gonna press along one, one half of that side, okay? So you don't have to do the whole thing, but just so that you're scoring down the middle of half of that. And we're gonna add that right down the center of our card. Those of you, let's cut this in half here. Those of you that um, do card making know that it's really hard to put pieces right inside on the score line. I tried it with tear and tape adhesive. First I started with snail, and then I tried it with tear and tape adhesive, and then I tried it with the mono liquid glue. We're gonna try it with the fine tip glue, okay? The fine tip glue, um, maybe that will give us more of a permanent uh, gluing down here, but we'll see. So you're just gonna take and put a little fine tip glue on the outside edge of one side and the outside edge of the other side. You don't need it right down the middle. And we're just gonna add that right there and press it. Oops, and that's why I didn't use fine tip glue before because the fine tip glue, if you, <laughs> if it seeps out or you move it, it actually shows. It has a little bit of a um, shiny look to it. So that's why I used the mono, uh, the multi-purpose liquid glue before. And that's a that's a good one. It's just that when I looked at my card, my finished card this morning, the sample one that I'm going to share with you, it was starting to pry apart on one side. So um, we're going to hope and pray that this one has a better bond. But 
The reason is because you're going to close and open the card continuously. Yeah, we're not we're not getting it to stay. Hmm. I think it's because it takes longer to dry than the other one. So I'll be just doing this and not closing it completely until we're completely done. Okay, this one can be added with snail, and so could this one. So we're gonna grab our snail adhesive and put a little bit of that on the back side. And those can get attached right here, close to the edge of your card on either side, like that, okay? I'm glad you guys like this. So those are belt loops. Thank you for your kind comments. <laughs> so you can make a masculine looking card out of this cutesy stamp set. It looks like a card that a teenager would open up and go, oh wow, oh that's pretty cool. So there, we have scraps. And I just turned it over and trimmed off the excess. So now we have the back side of a, a butt of jeans. <laughs> Okay, so this will go, um, this will get attached to our black piece here. Um, let's just go ahead and do that. I think we can do it. I think it's dry enough. Actually, let's move on to this piece first. So this one, we just have to layer onto our metallic paper, our, our copper foil sheet. But I have to warn you that when you put the adhesive, on, actually, when you put the adhesive on this side, some of the sheets, it doesn't like adhere right directly to, the adhesive doesn't adhere directly to the back side of these foil sheets. So we're gonna actually have to put it onto the, um, the blue cardstock. But on here, we can, we can definitely add the tape directly onto the foil side that way. But Okay, so this gets added here. You could add dimensionals if you want to, but um, we did not need that on this card, I thought. So again, like here, oh, that one's working. Maybe it's a different foil sheet. So some, some of the foil sheets I found are more slippery than others. So if you're having problems getting your adhesive on, then you can just put it um, directly onto your blue, like I said. Make sure you know which side you're doing it on. There we go. So that's gonna go on this side. And again, this is gonna get folded in half, but I don't wanna do too much folding right now because of this middle piece. So we'll take and turn this over, and now we can add either the fine tip glue or I'll use the multi-purpose because I think it, it dries a little bit faster. And you just wanna add that around the outside edges, leaving this area empty, and that will um, allow your, whatever you're gonna have, oops, sorry, leaving this area empty, because that will allow whatever you're gonna put into your pocket to have a place to slide into. So this will just go right here like that. And with um, the liquid glue, you have a little bit of wiggle room, which is awesome, because I needed that on this card. Okay, so my finished card, which I can't close all the way yet because this is still drying, looks like this. Ta-da! So here's the front, <laughs> and here is the inside. And like I showed you, where is my money? Here's the money. You can stick um, cash in there. You can even stick things like this. The pocket is wide enough. You can put in, you know, gift cards. Um, the gift card, of course, has a Stampin' Up logo on it because back in the day, Stampin' Up used to offer these gift cards as incentives to us demonstrators. You can see it's kind of prying open right there. So um, that's why I'm trying the fine tip. We'll see. We'll see if it works. So there's that finished card. Let me show you a couple other cards. Um, and as I'm showing you these other cards that uh, are related to the Pocket Full of Sunshine stamp set, know that you can, again, visit my blog tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I'll have this video shared onto my blog at, let's see if we can find that. There we go. Oh, no, that's Facebook. <laughs> there we go, stampyourartout.com. And it will post live tomorrow. It will post tomorrow with the video, with the dimensions that I gave you on screen, so you don't have to take a screenshot. Um, and I think, oh yeah. And then I'm going to have a link in there that links back to the cards that I'm going to show you right now. So this card is a card that I made. Gosh, was it a couple years ago now? Um, but this is more girly because it's got the rhinestones on the pocket. It's got the pink sunglasses coming out. Thank you, Laurie. <laughs> 
Thanks, Annette. Um, it's got the shreddies coming out of here too. This is an older color. We don't have this denim color anymore. But this little tag here, as you can see, it's one of the images in the stamp set. It says HBD for happy birthday. So you can have those fun little tags coming out the sides of your pockets. And on the inside, you could put gift card or you could even have it in the pocket when you give it to somebody, right? So that's another card idea there. And then, oh, you know what? I'm gonna do a, a quick, I'm hoping that Facebook will catch this here. E <laughs> I don't know how to do screenshots myself, but hopefully Facebook will catch that uh, we've, we've got, yeah, I don't know how to do it. I'm just hoping that it'll be there so I can do a still shot of it. Okay, and then this last one, you can have money in the pocket and then you can have more money in that pocket. So it's a double pocket card. And this one definitely looked a little girly too because it's got the white stitching and the doily on it. But another fun card to gift money with. So there's that one. Um, I'll just slip this inside here. Okay. Uh, what else did I want to mention? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so there's a stamp set that's coming out in the new catalog. The new catalog, by the way, looks like this. I can't show you the inside, but I can at least show you um, the cover. And inside, hang on, just let me peek here. <laughs> I'm teasing you guys, right? Inside, there is a stamp set. I take, there it is. There's a stamp set called Pocket Full of Happiness. And the Pocket Full of Happiness coordinates with the pocket framelit dies, which are not leaving. So this stamp set is leaving, and it's leaving behind these pocket framelits, which will coordinate with the new stamp set. So if you got that leaving stamp set, you could get these dies and the new stamp set later, and just think of all the fun things you can make. One other stamp, that's, stamp set that's leaving that I mentioned in the supplies is this one here called Brushwork Alphabet. I'm going to miss this one. This is one that I will not sell in my garage sale. <laughs> I love it. First of all, it coordinates with the fonts in this set. It's very, it's in kind of that similar script look, right? And so you could instead make a cover on your card that looks like that instead. So you can make it specific. You can put somebody's name on it. Um, if you have trouble lining up letters, um, alphabets like that, you can start on a piece of scrap paper, and I started writing out congratulations and then realized it did not fit very well on the length of paper that I wanted to do. So I switched and I turned it around and I started um, stamping congrats. And then I just lined that up, my little stamped one over here, I lined it above where I wanted to stamp on my card piece and started stamping so that it would end up in the middle. So there's a little tip for those of you that have trouble with alphabet stamp sets. All right, I think, oops, hang on. There we go. I think that's it. Um, retiring products, if you do not have a demonstrator, there we go. If you don't have a demonstrator, I invite you to um, choose me. Um, if you do have a demonstrator, go through them, but you can shop in our online store. You just go to stampinup.com and click on shop. Or if you want to visit my website, we have, I have a shop button um, right there on my website. You can also shop directly from, I'm gonna click it again there, from my Facebook page, there's a shop button. And you can get these retiring products, you can get any of the products that I showed today and um, anything else that your little heart desires. Remember that the retiring products are going to be leaving us um, June 3rd, but it's while supplies last. So some things have already disappeared. They're no longer available. Stamp sets are guaranteed through May 24th, and then after that, they are also while supplies last. So I hope that I gave you lots of great information. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm not doing a live drawing. Um, we agreed in our Facebook Live Hop that we were all going to draw our winners um, by, I think, wait, I have it written down here by 11 a.m. Uh, nope, that's wrong. <laughs> there it is, 11, 11 a.m. Central Time on May 11th. So I will try to draw my winner on or after that time. And then we have until 6 p.m. on Monday the 13th to announce our winners on our pages. So sometime between those two times, you'll find out if you were a winner or not. I'll private message you. You have to be a U.S. resident. And um, the prize will be 
the card that I made today along with a stamp set choice. And one of those stamp set choices is actually a pocket full of sunshine. Ah! <laughs> so, yay, yay, yay. And I think that's it. So I'm going to go back to my regular live um, online classes next week, 11 a.m. Central Time. And that's when we'll do our second drawing from the week before. And we'll just resume with our regular schedule. I hope you all had fun. Thank you for joining me. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.